Good morning. Welcome back, everyone. Excuse me on Instagram. Sorry about that. Good morning. Welcome back. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is Friday, July 21st, 2023. It is 9.04 a.m. And I guess I have some explaining to do, right? Because we've missed Bible study for the last four days. I haven't been on since last Friday. And I do apologize. It was not expected. It was I. If I know in advance I'm not going to be on, I always give you guys a heads up, but I had no idea that I was not going to be on. So I could not give you a heads up. So for that, I do apologize, but it's good to be back today. So Allison, what are we doing today? We're picking up with Mark chapter 8. We left off last Friday with Mark chapter 7. So we're going to continue on. And for those of you who might have um, missed Bible study missed me not being here for the last four days like my cousin did. My cousin reached out to me. It's like, I'm I'm looking for you. Where are you? So what did my cousin do? My cousin went to um, YouTube and watched Bible study, past um, Bible study sessions on there, which actually made me so happy because, you know, I'm always trying to encourage people to watch the replays on um Face, <laughs> on YouTube and help me grow the audience and like and share and spread and all of that. So when my cousin said that he went to um, YouTube to, to watch some prior episodes or Bible studies, that really did my heart well. All right. So I encourage everyone else, anytime that you want to catch up, you want to hear something again, or I don't come on, feel free to visit the YouTube channel. The channel name is Allison Bourne and catch up. All right. So once again, good morning, everyone. I do apologize. I am late today. So I know people who have been missing me all week might not even know that I'm on because I started late today. But anyway, let's jump right into prayer and into Mark chapter eight. I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified Translation this morning. And I wrote down, where are my notes? I wrote down a couple of verses in my notes this morning that I'm going to read to you out of the King James. All right. And I didn't really have any like particular thoughts on this because, you know, most of these stories we read already in Math in the book of Matthew. So um, let's just let's see what comes out of today's reading. All right. There are let's tell let me tell you how many verses there are. There are 38 verses. And let me just give you a quick weather update. The weather here today, it says it's 76 degrees Fahrenheit and cloudy, but it's actually raining. And I believe we're due to have rain all day today. So it's a very dreary day. All right, but well, we're going to get into the Word of God and today's Feel Good Friday. So we're going to have a great day, regardless of what the weather is doing here. And I pray wherever you are that the weather is better where you are. All right, so let's pray. And then let me flip back over to the Amplify. Let me get myself situated first. All right, this is uh, the first story that we're going to read about is the 4,000 fed. All right, so Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for waking each and every one of us up this morning. Father, I thank you for giving us the opportunity to assemble this morning to hear your word, Lord. Father, we thank you for keeping us throughout the week. God, I thank you for keeping us through all the challenges that we may have faced. I thank you for keeping us from accidents seen and unseen, Lord. I thank you that you have protected us. You have shielded us, Lord. I thank you for everything that you do for us. We don't take it for granted. Father, I ask that you continue to watch over our family members, Father, from the oldest to the youngest, both maternal and paternal bloodlines. Cover all of us, Father. Co cover every family represented here and on the replay, Lord. Father, I ask that you will give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Reveal to us things in your word today that we have never seen before, we have never gleaned before. Father, I pray that you will minister to each and every one of us. Get a hold of us, Father. Give us vision visions and dreams. Father, give us a fresh outpouring and a download of wisdom. God, give us fresh insight, revelation, foresight, knowledge. God, I pray that you will bring increase into our lives in every area where needed, oh God. Father, if we have gotten off track, Lord, I pray that you will course correct us and get us back on track speedily, oh Lord. Father, I pray for any of us that need a healing in our bodies. Lord, as we continue to read about all the healings that you've done, Father, we ask that you will heal us from the top of our heads 
to the soles of our feet. Give us even wisdom strategies and that we can implement on how to eat, how to exercise, Father, where to shop, where to buy our food in these days where things continue to be modified and altered. Lord, help us to find healthy food to eat. Lord, I ask that you will bless the water that we drink, the food that we eat, the air that we breathe. Oh God, Father, remove all the pollutants, contaminants, and everything else that is circulating in our environments that are not good for our bodies. Lord, I just ask today that you will bless, excuse me, bless our days from beginning to end. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. There's so much going on, right? When you follow the news, there's just so much going on. And so even this morning, after I finished listening to Mark chapter 8, I myself was on YouTube listening to the book of Revelation to our past Bible studies, right? And so we just have to continue to stay alert and ask God to direct our paths, right? All right, so let's just get right into the reading of the word. The first section here, this again is Mark chapter 8, Amplified Translation. The um, first section here is called 4,000 Fed. And then it goes into Peter's confession of Christ. And that's it. There's just two, um, two titles here. All right. And it says, In those days when there was again a large crowd gathered before him and they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples and told them, I feel compassion for the crowd. They have been with me now for three days and nothing left to eat. If I send them away to their homes hungry, they will faint from exhaustion on the road because some of them have come a long way. His disciples replied to him, where will anyone be able to find enough bread here in this isolated place? to feed these people. He asked them, how many loaves of bread do you have? They said, seven. He directed the people to sit down on the ground and taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks and broke them and repeatedly gave them to his disciples to set before them. And they served the crowd. They also had a few small fish. And when Jesus had blessed them and given thanks, he ordered the fish to be set before them as well. And the people ate and were satisfied and they picked up seven large baskets full of the broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 men were there besides women and children and he sent them away. Then immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanatha. The Pharisees came out and began to argue contentiously and debate with him, demanding from him a sign from heaven to test him because of their unbelief. He groaned and sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why does this generation demand a sign? I assure you and most solemnly say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. Leaving them, he again boarded the boat and left for the other side. Verse 14. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring bread and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. Jesus repeatedly ordered them saying, watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. They began discussing this with one another saying, it is because we have no bread that he said this. Jesus, aware of this discussion, said to them, why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Though you have eyes, do you not see? And though you have ears, do you not hear and listen to what I have said? And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the four, for the five thousand, five thousand, how many basket, baskets full of broken pieces you picked up? They answered, twelve. Verse 20, and when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many large baskets full of broken pieces did you pick up? They answered, seven. He was saying to them, do you still not understand? Then they came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man to Jesus and begged to touch him. Taking the blind man by hand, he led him out of the village. And after spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes and the man stared intently and his sight was completely restored. And he began to see everything clearly. And he sent him to his home saying, do not enter, do not even enter the village. Next section, verse 27, Peter's confession of Christ. 
Then Jesus and his disciples went out to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They answered him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, but others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter replied to him, you, in contrast to the others, are the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed. Then Jesus strictly warned them not to tell anyone about him. Verse 31, and he began to teach them that the son of man must of necessity suffer many things and be rejected as the Messiah by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and must be put to death and after three days rise from death to life. And he was stating the matter plainly, not holding anything back. Then Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him. But turning around with his back to Peter and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for your mind is not set on God's will or his values and purposes, but on what pleases man. 34. Jesus called the crowd together with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to follow me as my disciples, he must deny himself, set aside his selfish interests, and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come, and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering, and perhaps dying because of faith in me. For whoever wishes to save his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. But whoever loses his life in this world for my sake and the gospels will save it from the consequences of sin and separation from God. Verse 36. For what does it benefit a man to gain the whole world with all its pleasures and forfeit his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul and eternal life in God's kingdom? For whoever is ashamed here and now of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the son of man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. Amen and amen. Okay, so let's take a look at the footnotes here. There's a footnote here for verse 10. So verse 10 says... Then immediately he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanatha. So the footnote here is for um, Dalmanatha. It says, this may have been another name for Magadan or Magdala. Verse 12, it says, He groaned inside deeply in his spirit and said, why does this generation demand a sign? I assure you, most solemnly say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. So it says no sign. And it says here in the footnotes, the statement takes the form of an oath, which is an emphatic way of forbidding something. Verse 15. 15 says, Jesus repeatedly ordered them saying, watch out, beware of the leaven. So the footnote here is for the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And the footnote tells us a substance, this was referring to leaven, a substance which as yeast that consists mostly of fungi. The analogy relates the impurity of a leavening agent to the impurity of the man-made tradition and hypocrisy of the Pharisees that was preventing the nation of Israel from accepting the Messiah. Verse 27 says, then Jesus and his disciples went out to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And so the footnote here is uh, referring to Caesarea Philippi. It says located in the area known today as the Golan Heights. All right. So those were all the footnotes. Again, the reading. Good morning. The reading is from Mark chapter eight in the Amplified. We read the Amplified Bible, the Amplified translation this morning. All right. So the story here in the first section, the which is titled 4,000 Fed, starts out with, and this is from my notes. I just wrote this down in my notes. They started out with seven loaves of bread, right? So Jesus tells them to feed the people and their, their question is, well, you know, where are they going to find food now? Because they've been with him for three days and they've run out. All right. So Jesus says, 
well, what do you have, right? He says, how many loaves of bread do you have? They said, seven. How many fish? They said, we have a few small fish. And he feeds, he breaks it, he blesses it, he breaks it, he gives it to them and they feed the people, right? Now this tells you there are about 4,000 men in the census back in those days um, only counted the men. So it tells you here that there were about 4,000 men. That's besides the women and children, right? So you can probably double that, right, or more. All right, so then it says... Then immediately he got into the, he uh, about 4,000 men were there besides women and children. Um, the people ate and were satisfied and they picked up seven large baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. So I wrote in my notes here, they started out with seven loaves and a, it says a few small fish. And when they finished, they picked up seven baskets full of, of the broken pieces that were left over. So they started with seven and they ended with seven. So I just wrote in my notes that there was a replenishing, a restoration, right? Everything that they used was restored or replenished, right? And we know that God is capable of doing that. He can multiply our resources. He can replenish our resources. He can restore our resources. So I just wrote that down as a personal reminder for myself. Uh, sometimes we go through life and we feel like we or we, you know, we feel like we've experienced losses or setbacks. And, you know, just a personal note for myself, I feel like I have suffered many, many losses. And I continue even through the course of this week to talk to God about these losses. Like, why does this continue to happen? Why do people feel like they can continue to not be fair to steal things to borrow things to not replace things to break things not you know restore etc et so this is just a good reminder where people may fail us god never fails us right and so god is a god of re refreshing restoring etc et so don't i say that as a word of encouragement just because man may let us down, people may let us down. God never lets us down. And at any time, he can restore what was lost, the years stolen, right? The years wasted, the resources, the money. God can make all things new again. He can make things good again, make things right. Okay, the next thing I have down in my notes, I have verse 29, and verse 29 says, okay, so this is the section that's um, titled Peter's Confession of Christ. And it says here, verse 29, and he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter replied to him, you, in contrast to the others or the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Then Jesus strictly warned them not to tell anyone about him. So I made a note here that I wanted to read this to you out of the King James translation. So let's do that. So it says here, and he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Okay, let me back up. Let me read this to you a little bit further. And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples saying unto them, whom do men say that I am? That's verse 27. And they answered John the Baptist, but some say Elias and others, one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Peter answereth and saith unto him, thou art the Christ. And he charged them that they shall, shall, should tell no man of him. Let me go right into the next section that I have in my notes, which are verses 31 through 33. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake saying openly, saying that openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Now, just imagine this, that Peter now is attempting to rebuke Jesus the Christ. Right. And then th verse 33, it says, but when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter 
saying, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Now, as I was reading this, I was thinking here that he says, get thee behind me, Satan. He doesn't call out Peter by name. He's speaking to, to, and I'm, this is my, this is the way it hit me. Okay. This is what I was thinking as I read this, that he didn't get into a, a, a debate with Peter. He didn't say, Peter, what are you thinking? Peter, who do you think you are trying to rebuke me? Pete? Like he didn't address it that way. He says, he says, get thee behind me, Satan. So to me, he's dealing with this entity, this demonic spirit, right? And so we know we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? And so he addresses Satan. And he says, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. So I love this. To remember, again, and I'm going to use this as a reminder, that sometimes when people answer us in ways or treat us in ways that are um, not desirable or incorrect, right? We have to remember um, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And you have to start to, good morning, you have to deal with the spirit behind it, right? We can't always take offense at the person. You have to deal with the spirit behind that, the nature or, you know, people go through things. And so we have to deal with it that way, not always be offended at the person per se, but be offended and deal with the demonic spirit behind it. So I think that's just a great reminder, right? Because a lot of times we want to re react out of our flesh and we want to deal with people in the natural of flesh on flesh. We get into these conflicts and we don't necessarily stop to think, think about the spiritual battles that go on, right? And we've read in the different stories about these people that have been um, possessed. Good to see you. Good to be seen. Good to see you too. This week was called Life. That's what I'm going to call this week, but it's feel good Friday and it feels good to be back this morning. You know, um, I think honestly in the September makes two years that I will have been doing this, the Bible um, reading live in the morning. I think this is the first time ever that I can remember that I missed four consecutive days. Usually I miss a day here, a day there, but never, I don't think I've ever missed maybe more than two days. Correct me if I'm wrong. I will definitely stand corrected, but I don't think I've ever missed four consecutive days. I try not to, right? So anyway, this was awesome. Let me see. Did I have one more thing that I wanted to read to you out of the King James for 37, 30? Okay, 37 and 38. All right, let me start at 36 in the King James. Um, 36, for what shall it profit a man? Okay, let's start at 34 here in the King James. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples, also he said unto them, whomsoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man? His, this is 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Now, just as I was reading that, you know what else um, just kind of ran through my mind, right? So it says here, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his whole, own soul? And you hear pastors, and this really applies to all of us, right? They'll say, because you, you, you know, your family is your first ministry. Now, what happens when they're out doing God's work and doing God's will and they're traveling, traveling the world and they're ministering to people and souls are getting saved and people are getting, souls are getting saved and people are getting healed, but your, your home life, your family is perishing, right? So I just kind of thought about that. What good is it? When you're out, you're so um, involved in helping everybody else, but you're not helping the people within your home, 
within your family, within your bloodline, within your sphere of influence, right? So we have to make sure that we not only just take care of people outside of the four walls of our home, um, but that we make sure that we try to do the best that we can to take um, take care of people that are assigned to us or in our families or in our bloodlines. Now, here's the challenging thing about this, right? We also read where um, it, the Bible talks about not having honor in your own land, right? Like people become, we had this conversation last week, people become too familiar with you. What is it? I forget the exact wording. A prophet is not without honor in his own land or something like something to that effect, right? So the, the essence of the message is that people where you come from, the people that have known you all your life, people knew you before, let's say you started your ministry. They don't want to see the new you. They don't want to give credit where credit is due. They are stuck in your past and they are too familiar with you and they don't give you the respect as if you went to someplace new where people never knew you. They don't know anything about you. And when they meet you, they just see the ministry. They appreciate the ministry. They respect the ministry. But when you're dealing with people that have known you all your life, they knew you back when you were strung out on drugs. They knew you were knew you when you were on the street corner. But now you have been born again. God has cleaned you up. He's given you this great ministry. And you have a powerful ministry. People that knew you tend to look back and say, that's just right? That's just so-and-so. They don't want to give you credit. They don't want to give you the respect. So I just kind of thought about that. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So if you've just become rich and famous in this life and you have the houses, the cars, you know, the mansion, you have all of the material goods, but then you perish, right? You don't make the kingdom of God, you're thrown into the lake of fire. What good is that? What good is it for the short years that you're on this earth to have all of these material possessions and have all of the fame and be known all over the globe and then you don't make eternal life with God, right? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? People sell their souls. Right now we're seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm reading more and more stories about these entertainers who have sold their soul to, for fame and fortune because they want to be um, on the top in the music industry or in Hollywood, right? So it says, verse 38, let's just conclude with this. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels. So you cannot deny God and be ashamed of God. Um, and then it's reciprocal, right? It says of him also shall the son of man be ashamed. What you sow, you will reap. You don't want to acknowledge God. You don't want to, you know, you want to be ashamed of God. You want to keep him a secret. You don't want to admit or tell anybody that you believe in God, that you believe in Jesus. Um, you know, there's a price to pay for that. So this was awesome, you all. I enjoyed this this morning. I think there's a couple of life lessons or just notes, reminders for us, things we can apply to our lives and just in times of um, different things that we go through in life, things that you can just pull from, right? This is what we want. We want to get the word of God in our hearts, right? We want to remember, study the word, know the know the word, study the word to show ourselves approved. Get it into your heart, not just a thing that we do out of obligation or a sense of obligation. But we want to actually read the word, digest the word, and then figure out how to apply the word. What can we pull out of the word for ourselves? So for me, what am I, what is Allison pulling on this week? Like I said, I'm pulling on the verses that we read where they started out with seven loaves. They gave the seven loaves away, right? He broke it. He fed the 4,000. And when they finished, their basket was refull, re replenished. They ended up with seven. They started with seven. They gave it away and it was replenished. So here's the last reminder. Don't be afraid to give. Don't be afraid to give what you have to share. God can restore it. Right? Be the word, do the word, live the word. Right, don't just be a hearer of the word, be a doer of the word. That was excellent. Thank you for that. 
Yes. So with that, I will say have a wonderful day. It is Friday. Feel good Friday. Pray that everybody has some wonderful plans for the weekend. Um, take some time for yourself. Refresh. Listen to the word of God. Find some good gospel music. Um, you know, let me just a personal note. I went to the lab one day this week. I had to get some um, blood work done. And as I was sitting in the chair and the, the um, technician was getting everything prepared to draw my blood, I hear music. And I said to her, I said, is that C.C. Winans I hear? So she said, no, but I could tell it was gospel music from the lyrics, but it, it sounded like C.C. Winans to me. And I thought, you know what? How nice is that to be sitting in the lab and the technician is in there playing her praise and worship music. She's got a gospel music going and it wasn't. It was another artist. So she told me who it was. So I found another artist to listen to. And funny, sorry, the connection dropped. Funny enough, she goes, oh, you don't know this woman? And I said, no. So she was stunned that I didn't know who she was. She goes, oh, we sing her songs in church. And yes, I have been in church where we have sung the song. I just didn't know who sang it. So anyway, with that, I say, have a wonderful day, everyone. Please visit my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for visiting my YouTube channel this week. If you have not yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Help me grow the number of followers so that the algorithm will pick it up and share it with more people. For those of you watching on YouTube, if you look over this shoulder at the end of the video, you will see my profile picture. If you click on my profile picture, it will bring up the page with the subscribe button. If you tap or click the subscribe button, you will subscribe to my channel so that you will be, um, you know, kept up with all of the latest videos. If you look over this shoulder at the end, you will see a video card. If you click or tap on that video card, I'm going to link the reading of Mark chapter nine there so you can follow on with us as we um, make our way through the book of Mark. All right, this was awesome this morning. I pray that um, miracle signs and wonders show up in your day. May every need be met and grace and peace. And we will pick up on Monday with Mark chapter nine. All right, everyone have a wonderful day. Grace and peace. Good to see you. All right, everyone. Bye-bye.